All right, let's dive into solo ads and see if they're really the money makers people say they are. If you're listening, you've probably at least heard about them, right? Those email ads where you get to tap into someone else's audience. But today we're going beyond the hype, okay? We're going to figure out how this whole model actually works. And most importantly, we're going to see if it's the right fit for you. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. Yeah, think of it like we're popping open the hood of a race car. We're going to see what's driving those success stories, but also, uh, you know, what can cause a major engine blowout if you're not careful. Yeah, okay. exactly. And one of the first things that really surprised me when I was getting ready for this deep dive was how solo ads actually work. Like, I was surprised to learn that most vendors don't actually own those massive email lists they're selling access to. Yeah, it's true. Um, Michael Bashi, in his video, explains that a lot of vendors, um, they act more like middlemen, you know? They buy traffic in bulk from wholesalers, and then they resell it to buyers like you. So it's not as simple as just, like, finding a vendor and easily getting access to this huge, dedicated audience. There's more to it. There are multiple layers involved. Which makes me wonder... What does that mean for the quality of the traffic you're getting? That's a really important question. Yeah, this multi-tiered system, it can definitely impact the quality of leads you get. It means you got to do your homework, right? You really need to dig deeper into the vendor's reputation. Look at their track record. Make sure you're not getting stuck with low-quality clicks that never convert. Yeah, that makes sense. And it probably ties into why everyone keeps talking about tier one countries when it comes to solo ads. Yeah. What's so special about targeting specific countries? Okay, so targeting tier one countries, we're talking like US, UK, Canada, Australia. It's all about maximizing your return on investment, right? These countries are typically associated with higher purchasing power, which means the people on those email lists, they're more likely to have the money to spend on whatever you're promoting. So it's not just about getting clicks, right? It's about getting clicks from the right people, yeah. people who are actually likely to buy. It's like fishing in a well-stocked pond yeah. instead of casting your line in a puddle. Exactly. And the vendors themselves recognize this too. John McNeil, for instance, he offers two tiers of traffic in his videos, one with 95% tier one countries, and then a premium option with 100% US buyers only. That really shows you how important reaching the right audience is. Speaking of getting those sales, yeah. Marty Englander's $10 solo ad case study really opened my eyes to some potential problems. He got tons of clicks, but his conversions were really low. He compared it to having a store full of window shoppers. Lots of interest, but no one's actually buying anything. Yeah, Marty's experience, it brings up a really critical point, the quality of traffic. It can vary a lot from vendor to vendor. Even if you have a fantastic offer, it's not going to work if it's presented to the wrong people. Yeah, and he did mention that he got a 10% conversion rate. With yeah. the same offer. Yeah. But using a different traffic source. So maybe the problem wasn't the offer itself. Maybe it was the people seeing it. Exactly. It shows you how important it is to really vet your vendors. Okay. Don't just assume all traffic is created equal. You need to do your research. Find those vendors who can consistently deliver high quality leads. That makes sense. Yeah. He also mentioned the potential for future conversions from retargeting. So maybe some of those clicks weren't a complete waste after all. That's an important thing to remember about solo ads. Not all conversions happen right away. Sometimes it takes time for people to warm up to an offer and make a decision. Patience and a long-term perspective are key here. This brings me to something I want to make sure you don't miss. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. And get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. Now back to solo ads. It seems like traffic quality is only one piece of the puzzle. What else determines whether those clicks actually turn into cash? Yeah, you're right. Traffic is just the first step. You need a system in place to capture those leads and nurture them into paying customers. That's where having a high converting squeeze page comes in. Okay, that's a term I keep hearing, but I'm not totally clear on what it means. Can you break that down for me? Sure. A squeeze page is a simple landing page with one goal to get people to opt in to your email list. It usually offers something valuable like a free ebook or checklist or video training in exchange for their email address. Think of it like your virtual storefront. If it's not enticing, people won't bother entering by giving you their contact info. 
Ah, okay, so that's how you bridge the gap between that initial click and actually building a relationship with potential customers. Exactly. John McNeil, in his videos, he stresses aiming for a 50% conversion rate or better on your squeeze page. That means for every 100 people who land on your page, at least 50 should sign up for your list. Wow, that seems like a pretty ambitious goal. Is that realistic? It can be, but it takes work. You need to have a compelling offer, a clear call to action, and a well-designed page that builds trust and makes people want to join your community. Okay, and once they're on your list, that's where email marketing takes over, right? Exactly. ClickBank success in their materials. They emphasize the need to not only build a list, but cultivate it. Think of it like gardening. You wouldn't just scatter seeds and walk away. You need to nurture those leaves with valuable content, targeted offers, and authentic communication. So it's about more than just blasting out generic promotions. You have to actually provide value and build a relationship with your subscribers if you want them to stick around and eventually become customers. Mm -hmm. Right. You want to position yourself as a trusted advisor, not just someone who's constantly trying to sell them something. Okay. It sounds like building a buyer list is a crucial piece of this whole solo ad strategy. What's the best way to approach that? A buyer list is basically a segment of your email list that consists of people who have already purchased something from you. These are your most valuable leads because they've raised their hand and said, yes, I'm interested. Building a buyer list through solo ads is all about strategy. So it's like separating the casual shoppers from the serious buyers. Exactly. And the way to do that is to strategically promote low cost, high converting offers early on. Okay, I'm starting to see how this all connects. It's not about making a ton of money off those initial low-cost offers. It's about identifying those buyers and segmenting them into a list you can then target with higher ticket products or services down the road. Precisely. It's about building a sustainable system for long-term growth. Hmm. You're not just looking for quick sales. You're cultivating relationships and nurturing trust. Makes sense. So assuming you found a trustworthy vendor, you've got your squeeze page dialed in and you're building your buyer list, are there any other pitfalls to watch out for? Definitely one mistake people make is treating solo ads as a get-rich-quick scheme. It's not about pushing a button and watching the money roll in. It requires effort strategy and a willingness to adapt. So it's more like investing in a long-term asset than buying a lottery ticket. Exactly. Another common mistake is not tracking your results meticulously. You need to know where your clicks are coming from, what your conversion rates are, how much you're spending, and what your ROI is. Without this data, you're flying blind and making decisions based on guesswork. It's like trying to navigate without a map. You might get lucky and stumble upon your destination, but it's far more likely you'll end up lost and frustrated. <laughs> and lastly, people often give up too soon. Solo ads take time to master. You might not see results overnight, but if you're persistent, you can build a sustainable and profitable business using them. Before we get into those more advanced strategies, I want to remind you about a valuable resource. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. Now, back to our deep dive. We've laid a solid foundation before. What are some examples of people who are really crushing it with solo ads? What are they doing differently? Okay, so we've talked about the basics of solo ads, like finding the right vendors and crafting those squeeze pages and uh, building that buyer list. But I'm curious about the people who are really killing it with solo ads. What sets them apart? What are they doing differently? One thing that really stands out is that the people who are really successful with solo ads, they don't just see their subscribers as numbers on a spreadsheet. You uh -huh. know, they get it. They understand that building relationships. Real relationships, that's the key to long-term success. So it's more than just sending out sales pitch after sales pitch. What does that relationship building actually look like? Well, they take the time to understand their audience, like really understand them, their yeah. needs, their pain points, what they're struggling with. And then they provide genuine value. They build trust and they position themselves as helpful guides, not pushy salespeople. Right, it's the difference between a used car salesman and a trusted mentor. One is just trying to make a quick buck, and the other is actually invested in your success. Exactly. And this goes beyond just the emails they send. These successful solo ad users, they're active in online communities. They're engaging with their audience on social media. They're building a strong personal brand that resonates with their target market. So it's about being present, yeah. showing up authentically, and just demonstrating that you're a real person who cares about your audience. Exactly. And that authenticity leads to higher engagement, better conversions, and more sales. You know, another thing I've noticed is 
The people who are really successful with solo ads, they're not afraid to experiment. They're always testing and tweaking their strategies to see what works best. Absolutely. They know the online marketing world is constantly changing. What worked yesterday might not work today. So they're always looking at their data, identifying areas for improvement and making adjustments based on what the numbers tell them. It's like they're scientists in a lab constantly running experiments and refining their formulas. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. It's that data-driven approach that lets them optimize their campaigns and really maximize their ROI. Okay, so we've got building relationships, mm -hmm. being data-driven, and embracing that mindset of continuous testing and improvement. Are there any other secrets to solo ad success that we haven't talked about yet? Hmm, let me think. One final piece of the puzzle is understanding the importance of timing and relevance. Successful solo ad users are very strategic about when they promote offers to their list. They make sure their promotions are aligned with their audience's needs and interests at that moment. Right, so it's not just about sending out random offers whenever you feel like it. It's about being thoughtful and making sure your message is timely, personal, and that it really hits the right chord. Exactly. And that attention to detail can make a big difference in terms of engagement and conversions. So what does all of this mean for someone who's just starting out with solo ads? It sounds like there's a lot more to it than just paying a vendor and hoping for the best. Yeah, you're definitely right. Solo ads can be incredibly powerful, but they're not a magic bullet. They need a strategic approach. You gotta be willing to put in the work and you gotta be committed to continuous learning and adaptation. It's not path of income, right? right? It's a business model that needs real effort and dedication to see results. Exactly. If you're looking for a hands-off, get-rich-quick scheme, solo ads are probably not for you. But if you're willing to invest the time and energy to build those relationships, test your strategies, and refine your approach, they can be a game changer for your business. So the key takeaway here is, Solo ads can work, but they need the right mindset. And you gotta be committed to doing things the right way. I agree, and one last thought. The best way to figure out if solo ads are right for you is to just get out there and start experimenting. Arm yourself with the knowledge we've talked about. Think carefully about your goals and your resources and be willing to test and learn in the real world. Great advice. And don't forget about another valuable resource that can help you out. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for that is in Brian's YouTube bio. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of solo ads. We hope you got some valuable insights to help you decide if this is the right path for you.